As the sun goes down on Phoenix, Arizona, it also sets for one WNBA team tonight. Game three, Phoenix and San Antonio at U.S. Airways Center. Winner advances to the conference finals. We will play better. We will win this game because of our effort, uh, because of our motivation. Games like this, you have to be proactive. That's the one thing Coach Orem always taught us is, you know, the game will be there. You either grab it by the neck or it'll grab you by the neck. So hopefully we're doing a little bit of the grabbing tonight. Welcome to ESPN's coverage of the 2009 WNBA playoffs presented by Adidas. It's the decisive game three in the Western Conference semifinals as Phoenix hosts San Antonio here at U.S. Airways Center for the right to play Los Angeles in the conference finals starting Wednesday night at 10 Eastern on ESPN 2. Indiana and Detroit will meet in game one of the Eastern Conference Finals at 8 Eastern on Wednesday. Hi, everybody, alongside Hall of Famer Nancy Lieberman. I'm Dave Pash. Well, Nancy in game one, San Antonio beats Phoenix. Then in game two, the Mercury looked like the Mercury. They blow out the Silver Star, setting a bunch of WNBA records. What changed? What changed is the fact that I thought that they came out much more aggressive than they did in San Antonio. They took the offensive shots of San Antonio. They turned it into transition baskets for themselves. It's not the shots that San Antonio makes or misses. It's where they are. This time, Tarasi off the bounce is able to get to the rim before San Antonio's team defense sets up. Again, an offense or a rebound by the Mercury. This time, they use the pass to get into transition. San Antonio can never set up their defense because they can't catch up to the ball. This was a theme, and it was the bench of the Monarchs that really took control. They scored 42 points, had 21 rebounds, and I really think that that's the adjustment for Dan Hughes for the, for the Mercury bench. Well, San Antonio winless in three games now here in Phoenix, and this is the starting five for the Silver Stars in what could be the final game of Vicki Johnson's 13-year WNBA career. Becky Hammond hoping not. Lawson, Wade, Young, and Waters make up the rest of the starting five. And for Phoenix, Diana Taurasi, the league's leading scorer. Along with Kathy Pondexter, is also in the top five in the league in scoring. Tamika Johnson, Laco Willingham, and Tangela Smith. And now let's bring in the third member of our crew. Hello, Heather Cox. Hello, Dave. Tonight, Becky Hammond is playing with the weight of the world on her shoulders. Her production's down. She's averaging six fewer points in this series than she did in the regular season. So Dan Hughes has made some adjustments to get her more looks. You'll see more action off of screens, more ball movement to get her more opportunities. Additionally, Becky admitted she feels personally responsible for getting Vicki Johnson a ring before she retires. And according to none other than Vicki Johnson herself, it's putting way too too much pressure on Becky to make sure it happens. Becky said, or Vicky told me that she's pleaded with Becky to relax, telling her, don't do this for me, let's do this for each other. 296th game together for Vicky Johnson and Becky Hammond, many of those coming in New York, and five finals appearances for Vicky Johnson, but no title. She's been brilliant, though, in this series, averaging six assists, Johnson, and no turnovers in the first two games. San Antonio perfect in decisive game threes. Will that continue? Nearly a turnover, but here's Hammond with it. Four to shoot. And Hammond got it off and scores the game's first basket. I think that's a very good sign right there for the Silver Stars because Becky Hammond matches up pretty well, I believe, with the smaller Cappy Pondexter. Here's Pondexter who struggled shooting the basketball in game one. A little bit better in game two. Tamika Johnson off the bounce. And that's a good sign for Phoenix if she's filling it up. She's been filling it up this year. She's a career high, 9.6 in scoring. Very important for her to make Becky Hammond play on the defensive end and play at a fast pace. Phoenix set the WNBA record for scoring this year at 93 points per game. Sophia Young, who has shredded the Phoenix defense all year and averaging 22 points per game in the series. Tarasi off the mark with her first shot. And Johnson out of there with it. Dave, it's so important for San Antonio to establish that they can set up in the half court, make these shots. Yep. Just take their time and use the pace to their advantage, especially with spacing. A lot of veterans on this team as Young hit the field goal there. And Waters has been in a lot of playoff games. And even though they got blown out in game two, you got the feeling that uh, it was going to be a little bit closer tonight. 
Tangela Smith with her first hoop. And Willingham with the dish. You must build your defense to San Antonio on the weak side because chances are the Mercury are going to beat you off a screen roll. That second and third line must be there. Lawson Wade just blew past Tamika Johnson for an easy layup. Yet another player who's had a career season known as a three-point specialist. She's done a great job of attacking the rim, being a floor leader for Dan Hughes. On Dexter with the basket. Phoenix back within two. First hoop for Cappy, who is fourth in the league in scoring. And fourth in assists. And our first foul, that's inside on Tangela Smith. Dan Hughes in his fifth season. He was the head coach at the All-Star Game this year after San Antonio made it to the WNBA Finals last year, falling to Detroit. Correction on the foul, it's Pondexter who commits the first foul in the game. From a player's point of view, you must come out and not meet the level of aggression of the Phoenix Mercury. You have to exceed it. Johnson, no. Here's Tamika Johnson bringing it up the floor. Willingham facing up on Sophia Young. Way off of that shot. Lawson Wade in transition. Waters poked it out to Hammond. Oh, good pass by Waters, and Sophia Young is fouled. She'll go to the line. A beautiful play right there by the 6-4 and Waters. What she does so well is keep the ball alive, but then she is also a crafty passer. This is great teamwork. The ball goes inside. Everybody looks at the ball. Look who cuts down the middle. That's the give and go. That goes back to John Wooden days. It's the simplest play in the game. Foul was on Pondexter. That's two on Kathy Pondexter. She's going to have to go to the bench. And Penny Taylor will come into the contest. But you take out an Olympian and you add an Olympian. Yeah. And even though Penny Taylor comes off the bench, she's won it. Everybody thought back in 2007 when the Mercury won the championship, she really was the X factor. And she was missed a year ago when they didn't make the playoffs. And she missed most of this season with an ankle injury, but came back for the final 14 games and has had an outstanding series. Taylor off the mark there, though, and Waters with the rebound. Johnson tried to go baseline and lost it out of bounds. Good D there by Penny Taylor. Let's check in with Heather for more on Penny. Well, Dave, you were just talking about Penny's ankle injury, also dealing with another injury. Broke her finger, that left index finger of her non-shooting hand, very heavily taped and guarded. She broke it in that last game, but it's assured me it isn't affecting that shooting touch. Not affecting Diana's either, guys. Well, Tarasi also has her left fingers taped. Nancy is a shooter. How does that impact you? It won't impact either one of them because it's their non-shooting hand. It might sting a little bit if hurt, but... When Diana Taurasi can come off the screen and get her hips into her shot, she has arc and she's got precision in how she releases the ball. Offensive foul on Sophia Young. There's Corey Gaines in his second season as head coach. He was an assistant in 2007 when the Mercury won the title with Paul Westhead directing the bench. Taurasi again, feeling it here early. First lead for the Mercury. And five for Tarasi. You know what great coaches do? And Corey Gaines called the same play to come back to Tarasi. That was not deja vu all over again. And Young traveled. When Diana Tarasi starts the game aggressive for her team, that is the difference for this Phoenix Mercury team. It starts and ends with what she does. Taylor open for three. And over the top of the backboard, so it will go to San Antonio. Orange Flair, look at the back door. Orange Flair, look at the back door. At Federate, we stay. 
This is the Rover defense that everybody throughout the season has talked about. Diana Taurasi, it's a zone, and it can take the shape of many things. It could be a 2-1-2, two, two, it could be a 3-2. She's like the free safety in football. Becky Hammond knocks down a three. She was just two of 10 in the series prior to that made shot from behind the arc. Prior to that, the Silver Stars had turned it over three trips in a row. They have to get quality possessions. And a San Antonio foul on Lawson Wade. That's her first. First team foul officially on San Antonio. Phoenix in this series. Outstanding at the free throw line. 25 of 27 as a team. They set the WNBA record for free throw shooting during the regular season. By, by extending that. Well, that's what happened right there. We all should have saw that. She extended here and cleared space. Dan Hughes telling Sue Blau what he thought of the call. As mentioned Wednesday, game one of the Eastern Conference Finals between Indiana and Detroit, and then following that, Los Angeles will take on either San Antonio or Phoenix. And then NBA TV Friday, it's game two of the Conference Finals. What makes Diana Trossi so special is not only is she a winner, she likes to have fun. She makes her teammates better. She trusts them, and that's an important ingredient. Waters got free, missed a lot of layups in game one, able to slap that one in off the window from Vicki Johnson. Beautiful play that time on screen roll, and Waters going to the front of the rim. Here's Tangela Smith, who actually led the WNBA in three-point shooting during the regular season. That was a two. Her foot was on the line. Tangela Smith has been doing that through her 12 years in the WNBA, one of the really fine players in this league consistently. Well, Lawson Wade had Waters underneath. Here's Johnson sizing it up, knocking down a three. San Antonio by one. What a great start but offensively for both teams. San Antonio is 7 of 9 from the field. San Antonio doing a great job with their offense because they have great spacing. You must, must match the shooting of the Phoenix Mercury because it puts so much deep, it puts so much pressure on your offense to make shots because of the Mercury's offense. Yep, Phoenix already 6 of 10 from the floor. The foul on to Game three in the Western semifinals. The winner advances to play L.A. for the right to go to the WNBA Finals. San Antonio by one. San Antonio doing a great job of ball movement. See how they start the ball on one side of the floor. This is against Phoenix's Rover. It's a zone. They throw it to the other side. Everybody shifts. When the, stop it right there. When the ball goes in the waters, look at Penny Taylor. She has to acknowledge the ball. This is Vicki Johnson. Look, look at the next pass. It goes. VJ is already into the flow of her motion. That is just beautiful execution by Dan Hughes' team. I'll, I'll bring her about the two minute mark or so. Well, Dan Hughes, a veteran coach. He was in Cleveland. Now the Funk Rockers, who actually drafted Penny Taylor. And Penny was 19 years of age. Hughes was there. Sophia Young off the mark. Here's Pondexter is back on the floor despite two personal fouls. Yeah, I think this is kind of a little iffy right here with Cappy coming back in the game in the first quarter. She's got to be smart. Turned it over there. Here's Johnson. And Vicki Johnson gets it to go. She's got five points. Let me tell you about Vicki Johnson. On the year, she averaged six points a game. In the playoffs, she's averaging over 11 Savvy and dependable. Foul on Ruth Riley is her first and the second on San Antonio. Now Vicki Johnson, uh, we talked with her in San Antonio last week and just such a confident player. Going to continue to play overseas, wants to get into coaching, but obviously is hoping that her WNBA career continues in the conference finals at least. Dave, this league should be honored to have had Vicki Johnson in this league for 13 years. She started out in New York, helped build that franchise, which was a model franchise for the first five or six years as far as getting deep into the playoffs or to the finals. She took her magic back home to the state of Texas. She lives in Dallas. And when you talk about a rock solid person, and then we'll throw in what she's done as a basketball player. Yeah. That's all you need to know about her. Won the sportsmanship award last year in the league. Becky Hammond off the mark. Taylor clears after hitting a couple free throws on the other end. Here's Keisha Swanye into the game. 
Oldie posting up. A good feed, and Dewana Bonner, the sixth woman of the year in the WNBA, gets her first basket. Beautiful teamwork in passing. I think the Mercury are one of the best passing teams, but you have to to play their type of offense. They've got six assists on seven made shots so far. Hammond with her second three. San Antonio back on top. If you're Swanye, you have got to know, you must go over that screen against Becky Hammond. You cannot go under by two feet. Line Dexter off target. Here's Young spotting up, and she knocks down a three. Only a 31% three-point shooter on the season. San Antonio by five. Sophia Young really lives in the paint area from about 15 and in, but every year she's expanded her game a little bit more. Lawson Wade with a steal. As Riley and Hammond trailing, finds Hammond, and she missed the layup. Here's Taylor. Well, you got to give San Antonio a lot of credit right now. They are playing great defense. Yep. They're not turning the ball over. They're hitting their shots. And the Mercury seem out of balance right now because they're not getting that transition that they like up and down the floor. And Dan Hughes told us today that's the key to the game, transition. They did not have a good transition game in game two, but were terrific on Thursday night in game one. As Penny Taylor scores inside. She's a nightmare. She can post you up. She can go off the dribble. She can shoot the three. It's just really hard to stop her. Four points for Taylor. That was her first field goal. Here's Shauna Crossley off the bench. Only the second three-point miss for the Silver Stars tonight. And Pondexter fouled by Becky Hammond. That's her first and the third on San Antonio. We have four of the top five scores on display here tonight in the series. Lauren Jackson did not play at the end of the uh, playoffs because of that injury. It's a lot of star power right there. Not only with how they get their points, they just play at a, another level mentally and then physically they have an effect on their teammates. I'm really surprised Diana Taurasi is sitting on the bench right now. She must be on the court for the Mercury. Shot clock down to three. And that one in and out. Oldie is there for the putback. Mercury has a foul to give here. We hear Corey Gaines head coach saying don't foul even though they do have a foul to give as Young is off the mark there and Phoenix can hold for the final shot of the quarter. Swanye an open look can't knock down the three Bonner with the rebound. Go oh, great block by Ruth Riley to end the opening quarter. That was a terrific first quarter by both teams. A lot of defense. A lot of good plays going to the rim for both teams, but for Ruth Riley here, being in the right place at the right time, Bonner's going to learn. You know what? She's six foot five. A little pump fake uh, might add uh, to the repertoire. And both teams know what's at stake here tonight. Winner advances to the conference finals, and a great start to this one. Phoenix for game three of the Western Conference semis joined by San Antonio head coach Dan Hughes and coach you vowed to get Becky Hammond more involved in this game so far so good how have you done it well just a couple things I think I think we've done a good job moving the ball and screening well for her she's been involved in screening well we're getting some separation off of that but I think I think it's got a lot to do with us executing in a half court plus we've got more transition in this quarter it gives her an opportunity as well there speaking of transition you said the X factor would be transition D you had it in game one didn't have it in game two 
what do you need to ensure that you have it here in game three? Well, I, I think it's an effort thing. I think it's, it's matching up early. We did a decent job there. They hurt us with some stagger action, but we got the game in the half court. We got to be persistent about getting it in the half court, and that's a quarter. We'll see how the other three go. Coach, thank you. Exactly what Dan Hughes was saying. If we can keep the Mercury in the half court, pretty much if, Dave, if you take away their transition, you take away the pulse of the Phoenix Mercury, they have no fast break points in the first quarter. That has to be a huge victory for San Antonio. Yet Phoenix has the lead after Tamika Johnson scores the first points of the second period. Tarasi led Phoenix in that opening quarter with eight points in just six minutes. Becky Hammond and Sophia Young had eight apiece for San Antonio. Phoenix has scored the last six points going back to the end of the opening quarter. Aaron Fairparaglou into the game. Shot clock down to two. Waters did get it away and scores. Fabulous recognition of time and score. Ann Waters knows mentally the shot clock is down. You catch, you shoot. San Antonio had the worst record of playoff teams during the regular season at 15 and 19. Phoenix had the best record at 23 and 11. But here we are in a deciding game three. And Diana Taurasi playing like she did in those championship games at UConn and also in the finals a couple years ago. She's already in double figures. Diana Taurasi was licking her chops when she got the matchup of Ann Waters on her. And Vicki Johnson is just showing the toughness and, the, as I say, the dependability in big game situations. Well, you talked about it. Average six points during the regular season. She already has seven in this game. And averaging 11 so far in the series. Pondexter off the mark. Cleared by Waters. You think about it, during the regular season, the Silver Stars were last in the league in rebounding, but they match up well rebounding-wise against the Mercury all season long. Charles Barkley in the stands, uh, taking in tonight's game. Barkley, a former son, still resides in the Phoenix area. And really a big fan of women's basketball, very supportive of charities, of women's basketball, of the NBA. I, I could go on and on what Charles means to this game. Tarasi too strong, offensive rebound, Willingham, and foul by Pamperaglou. That's the first foul in the quarter on San Antonio. Lewis Amundsen also in attendance, member of the Phoenix Suns. Orlando Tucker here as well. Programs like that, they help each other. I know that Alvin Gentry was here throughout the yeah. course of the season. He was here this morning at shoot-around. At shoot-around, Mark West is always at Phoenix Mercury basketball games. It's nice to see these two teams just support each other the way that they do. See the numbers during the regular season for Laco Willingham. She went to the finals back when she was a member of a Connecticut Sun, went twice. And Phoenix continues to shoot lights out at the free throw line. Seven of seven in this game. They missed only twice the entire series. I have to tell you, sometimes playing against the Mercury, it's like fool's gold. You keep matching them for scoring, but you end up playing their pace. Air Paraglou, no, batted around. Sophia Young is there and puts it up and in. Pondexter <laughs> drops in the three. Championship teams are great passing teams. The Mercury understand discipline to spacing and getting the ball to the open player. Shot clock down to five. Good D by Tangela Smith. Air Paraglou able to get it up on the glass and it drops in to tie the game at 33. Aaron, formerly known as Aaron Busher, now married to a Reese uh, basketball player as Laco Willingham gets the basket. Phoenix starting to get some points on the inside and outside now. Because they're going inside. Willingham was fourth in the league this year in field goal percentage. She's their main low post scorer for the Mercury. There, Paraglou traveled. 
fifth San Antonio turnover. All you have to know about the Phoenix offense right here, you drive to the basket, you draw, you send it back. I mean, this is like cat and mouse when you get Cappy Pondexter shooting that three. It's beautiful. That's exactly what Coach Corey Gaines wants from his team. You run the defense on a string back and forth. So many weapons for the Mercury, and that's their best weapon, Diana Taurasi, who has 12 points here in the first half. Phoenix by four. Largest lead of the night for the Mercury. Okay, we've been talking this whole half about how great San Antonio has been playing. Uh -huh. They've been knocking down shots, and they're still down 37-33. Remember, I said fool's gold. You keep trying to match them. San Antonio is shooting 64%, and they're losing. Remember game one. Pondexter struggled. Tarasi struggled. Yet San Antonio had to hang on at the end to win. Silver Stars hanging around against Phoenix. As far as her game, she's one of the best in this league. You know, and, and, and maybe, in my opinion, one of the top three guards in this league that ever played this game. And... Uh, and I, I'm a big fan of uh, Cynthia Cooper because I had to guard her every night, you know, and 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 I know her her uh, level of talent. And Diana's right there with her, you know. I haven't had nightmares about Diana yet, but Coop I have many times. <laughs> well, she's fortunate that she hasn't had nightmares against her, but for Tarazi, she has led this league in scoring three times in four years. I agree with Vicki Johnson. She is better now than she's ever been, and her scoring average has dipped, but she's still first in the league in scoring. She has added the pull-up shot. We know she's a great three-point scorer, but you can't stop her. She's bigger, she's stronger, she's quick, she can take you off the dribble. She does everything. She's got big mitts, and she changes the game by how she handles the ball, and by the way, Dave, the difference maker for me is that she has changed her body with conditioning yeah, and, she, and she defends the best player on the opponent's team. Right now she's guarding Becky Hammond. They come much quicker. Now, Becky Johnson said one of the best three. She mentioned her and Cynthia Cooper. I imagine you're the other person in that list. I'm just guessing. I was on that short list, but then I just added my name to it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Becky Hammond with a shot clock at eight. Lawson Wade and Tarasi altered that shot. Again, that quickness got out there. I don't think Lawson Wade thought that Tarasi could get there on that three point trot. Diana is in one of the top statistical categories in the league at block shots, which is still amazing. Tangela Smith from Penny Taylor, and Phoenix has a six point lead, its largest. The Mercury have eight potential starters. Their bench is so deep, deeper than the championship year. Oh, there's Tarasi with the block right on cue. An off the ball block by Tarasi and tried to hit Taylor on the screen roll and Phoenix turned it over. This is exactly what Diana Tarasi does. Look at the good defense right here by Taylor. You force her to the middle to help and look Look who is coming from the opposite side. She doesn't even know that Tarazi is there. That's the element of her game. Nobody has her skill set on the perimeter. Is she the MVP in your opinion this a year? Absolutely, but I have to tell you, if you've made me vote today, Tamika Catchings is on fire yeah. in the playoffs. I'd have to like vote with my eyes closed. Indiana plays Detroit in the Eastern Finals. Phoenix trying to move on to play L.A. in the West Finals. This is an elimination game here at U.S. Airway Center, and Vicki Johnson does not want her career to end. She's got nine points. 13-year veteran playing her final WNBA season. Pretty much, they have played straight up, but the Silver Stars are kind of like a, a foot in the paint type of defensive team. They are a team defense. They are not individuals when they play. That is not their best way for them to play. Waters working on Tangela Smith. Boston Wade tried to hit Waters. Swanye stepped in front and deflected the pass. 
six San Antonio turnovers here in the first half as we hit the four minute mark. Tarasi back door. That's 14 points now for Diana Tarasi. Good luck by Penny Taylor. Dave, that's one team in one mind for the Phoenix Mercury. That's not a set play. Waters can't get to that pass. Another turnover. Diana Tarazi, this is how you feel the game. That's eye contact. That's jump stop, power move right to the rim. Beautiful play by these two. And you know why there's no help defense? Because you've got another three-point shooter on the other end of the floor. They cannot double team. Tarazi from way out. And Oldie got the offensive rebound. Our technical difficulties have been restored. Let's get you back to the action in Phoenix. Game three, Phoenix and San Antonio. Winner moves on to the Western Conference Finals. We apologize for our technical difficulties here at U.S. Airways Center, the 2009 WNBA playoffs presented by Adidas. Phoenix on top by three. Becky Hammond, red hot for the Silver Stars. Five of seven from the field. Three th uh, threes in this game. 13 points. Looking to tie it here. And that went off the heel, but Vicki Johnson there. Good defense by Oldie to intercept. 14 points for Diana Taurasi. She is the leading scorer for Phoenix in this game. I'll have to tell you, I'm a little miffed at how easy it's been for Diane, for uh, Becky Hammond to get her shots off against the defense. Oldie kept it alive. Look at the hustle by Oldie. It'll go to San Antonio, though. And coming up at the half, the IHOP halftime report. You'll get to know Becky Hammond a little bit better. Also, an injury update from the National Football League. A lot of guys going down in week two, and also the pennant race in Major League Baseball. Both teams with a foul to give. And Antonio trying to cut the lead to one or maybe tie with a three. Shot clock down to seven. Here's Johnson off the bounce. No, but a foul called on Bonner. That's a smart. Vicki Johnson, vintage basketball. She understands the shot clock. She goes left, force her to her right. Look at this, she's going to her strong hand. So you get the rotation. Now you've got the shot that you want her to take. Put your hand up and contest. You don't have to block that shot. Rookie mistake there by Bonner. She's been great all year. It is a mistake. She'll learn from it. And she went up with the wrong hand. Vicki Johnson is left-handed. You have to match the hand of the shooter. Bonner, the fifth overall pick this year, sixth woman of the year, and certainly a candidate for rookie of the year in the WNBA. San Antonio is back within a point. And Corey Gaines will call a timeout to talk about what likely will be the final shot of the half. The winner of this game wins this series and will play Los Angeles on Wednesday on ESPN2. Game one of the Western Conference Finals. Looking at the Eastern Finals, Indiana, Detroit, even though Indiana had a better record in the regular season, the shock really coming on of late. Who do you like in that series? The shock, I have to tell you, they have a totally different basketball team than they had earlier in the year. Nikki Teasley's been important for them. I am going with Indiana. The way they play their defense. They have three players in Douglas, right. Kelly Bubalagla, and Ken, who have been right first here. team all defensive team. All right? Pass it to the five. D, I want you to come really high and go get a handoff. Are you coming to get a handoff, all right? I want you to turn and set a pick on Kathy's man. Turn full and stand still. Don't move. Tap. So once that happens, if she has it, give it to her. If it's not there, no problem. The one's going to go through. Dribble hand off with Cappy. You got it, Cap, all right? If they go zone, if they go zone, go zone get. Zone get. It's good coaching right there because you know you're drawing up a play for man to man. But he is also cognizant, Corey Gaines, of the fact that maybe Dan Hughes switches the defense so he at least tells his players to be prepared. Now Phoenix at one point, a couple of minutes ago, looked like it might carry a double figure lead into halftime, but seven straight points 
by San Antonio to get within one of the Mercury. Eight seconds to go. Here's Pondexter. Pondexter leaning in. Too strong from three. Rebound Young. Perpetually wasn't ready for it. That'll end the half. San Antonio closes out the first half on a 7-0 run, and Dan Hughes, Silver Stars, trail Tarasi's Mercury by only one. Heather Cox standing by with Diana Taurasi. Dave, thanks. Diana, before the game, Kathy Pondexter told me she thought this was the most important game of her career. Wow. What kind of sense of urgency do you feel? I, I mean, when you know it might be your last 40 minutes of basketball for the summer, I think that's pretty much motivation for everyone to come out and play hard. So it's a pretty big game. San Antonio certainly sticking with you. What concerns you the most? Uh, you know, they're getting a lot, of, a lot of looks. Becky's getting loose on us. Sophia's getting a lot of easy buckets. So we just have to kind of do what we did the other game where we buckled down and we concentrated a little bit more, and then we'll be fine. Keep it up, D. Thanks. Thanks. All right, Heather, one-point lead for Phoenix. Tarasi had 14 first-half points. 43-42, Mercury leading. And we'll head to the studio for the IHOP halftime report after this. Welcome to the IHOP halftime report. Three-time scoring champion Diana Taurasi leading all scores with 14 points. Her Mercury up one at the break over the Silver Stars. San Antonio a perfect 4-0 in decisive game threes in franchise history. Oh, we're in for a doozy in half number two. And with that, we welcome you inside the WNBA studios. I'm Cindy Brunson. We'll get to NFL news in just a bit. But first, let's get you caught up on the pennant chases. The Braves in the wild card chase taking on the Mets. Atlanta swinging a bounce to York for a sixth straight time. Top one, Atlanta two to nothing with one aboard Garrett Anderson taking Pat Mish for a ride. His 13th of the year, four nothing Braves. Atlanta just five and a half back in the wild card with 13 to play at the start of the day. Top two, Matt Diaz a swing and a drive. His 12th and Atlanta's lead is five to nothing. Inning continues. There's two aboard for Chipper Jones and oh, Jerry Manuel doesn't want to see this. Bang, a three run shot. Jones with his 17th. Braves win with ease by a final count of 11 to 3. The Mets trying to win three in a row for the first time since late July, and they are denied. Elsewhere in the National League, Central leading St. Louis is magic number down to four at the start of today's play. Cardinals bounce the Astros by a final count of seven to three, and the Giants and Diamondbacks are tied at twos in the bottom of the fourth. San Francisco woke up four and a half back of wild card leading Colorado. Checking in on the Red Sox and the Royals, a wild card leading Boston putting its three game win streak on the line. In the top of the seventh, it's the Royals on top by a count of 11. 11 to 9. Titus race in all of baseball is in the AL Central. Only three games separating the division leading Tigers and the Twins. Minnesota all over the White Sox in the bottom of the ninth. That one's almost over. LAA on top of Majors Best New York. Two to nothing in the top of the third. And Texas all over Oakland. Four to nothing bottom three. Last year, the Seahawks lost quarterback Matthew Hasselbeck for half the season. Find out why Seattle fans are worried about their quarterback already this season. That's next on the IHOP Halftime Report. I like the way we battled in that half. I liked it a lot. Okay, but what you've got to do now is you've got to, you've got to have some poise. There'll be some times they'll make some shots. You hang tight, because you're going to make shots at the other end. You keep poise in your play. Here we go. We got it. We got it. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the 2009 WNBA playoffs presented by Adidas. Phoenix by one. San Antonio ending the half on a 7-0 run. Back with Hall of Famer Nancy Lieberman. I'm Dave Pash. Corey Gaines, the Phoenix coach, told us today he knows Becky Hammond's going to get more shots. Dan Hughes told us today Becky Hammond's going to get more shots. She did. She made him in the first half. Oh, she made it because I was just stunned that the Mercury were going underneath these screens. I mean, somebody on the Mercury has to have cable and know that Becky Hammond, she likes those angles to the basket. She gets underneath you. But look at this. She even had a chance to clutch her shot. Nobody is in her zip code. Why do you go underneath the screen when you must fight over or post? You must show and help. Right here, Bonner goes underneath the screen. 
that seemed to be sort of a pattern that is an adjustment defensively for the Mercury in the second half. And, and meanwhile, Nancy, I think the shocking stat of that first half, no fast break points for a Mercury team that loves to get out and run. You're absolutely right because they were playing half court basketball, but it's the transition defense right here by San Antonio. They want to build their defense on the weak side. Right now, everybody's matching up. When Cappy gets this back, watch how San Antonio has feet in the paint. One, two, three, four, right here, feet in the paint. They swarm Cappy Pondexter. She turns it over. It leads into transition points for them. This is not the style of play that the Mercury wants. Again, a shot here, a miss. You would think the Mercury are going to push the ball. First of all, they don't get the push off the pass, and they put the ball. One, two, three, four, five. We have all matched up. You no longer have a fast break, and you take a quick poor shot by Willingham right now. This is exactly what makes Dan Hughes happy. Let's check in with Heather Cox. Well, guys, Nancy wasn't the only one stunned that Phoenix was going under those screens. I talked to Becky Hammond coming out of the locker room. She was flat out surprised. She said, hey, I'm going to give what the defense takes me. If they're going to go under, I'm going to look for my shot. But she admitted she's definitely trying to be more aggressive in this game. But she said it's a fine line. I need to get my teammates involved, too. We'll see how Phoenix adjusts in the second half. Opportunity here, Heather, for San Antonio to take the lead for the first time in a while. And they go to Waters. And Waters is able to score. Seven and a half minutes left in the second quarter was the last time San Antonio had the lead. Silver Stars have scored the last nine points. Tamika Johnson with the three. Dave Cappy Pondexter told me today when she heard that Tamika Johnson had an opportunity to be brought to the Mercury, she called Corey Gaines every day. Did you get the deal done? Did you get the deal done? Remember, she played the point position a year ago. Now she's got freedom at the two. Waters with the jumper in and out. And Willingham able to get a hold of it. Here's to Rossi, who led all scores with 14 first half points. Hammond had 13. Smith off the mark from three. Long rebound to Sophia Young. I do not see any energy from the Phoenix Mercury. Very uncharacteristic to them. They look like they're okay walking the ball up and dribbling instead of passing to attack. Here's Young off the bounce. Brick that one. Waters, who's had a nice game, got the rebound. Tamika Johnson, who's about a third of Waters' size, took it away. And Tarasi in transition. Tough shot. Got it back, though. Johnson, another three-point look. That one in and out. Lawson Wade out of there with it. And Vicki Johnson, who had 11 points in that first half, slows it up. Remember how we used to talk about Mike Singletary? The eyes. Vicki Johnson has the eyes and the tenacity of Mike Singletary. When you want to will your team to a higher level, and like Mike Singletary, Vicki Johnson wants to get into coaching when her playing days are over, and this is her final WNBA season. On Dexter, good work inside, seven points for Cappy, the fourth leading scorer during the regular season. How about the average time of possession so far? Not very good for the Phoenix Mercury. They 16 seconds, that's unheard of for them. They want to push and score. Push and score and keep you on your heels. They're pushing here. Johnson into the lane. And good defense by San Antonio. Dan Hughes would tell you, build your defense on the weak side. Tarasi Pondexter will get by you. Who's behind to help? Tarasi made that look easy. Her first bucket of the second half. 16 for the game. Waters to Lawson Wade. And she has been terrific in this series. Coming into tonight, shooting 70% from the field in the series. She's a three-point specialist. Now that she's been able to round out her game with defense and being a playmaker, that's made her more valuable. And the San Antonio loose ball foul. Wednesday night ESPN has two Major League Baseball games. First at 7 Eastern, it's the Phillies and Marlins. Then at 10, San Francisco and Arizona. Wednesday night baseball presented by Smirnoff Ice, part of the Hunt for October on ESPN and ESPN360.com. Foul was on Sophia Young. That's her second. First on San Antonio here in the quarter. Winner of this game plays L.A. in the Western Conference Finals starting Wednesday. 
also going to say the reason why the Mercury are not getting fast break points because they're dribbling the ball up the floor because San Antonio has taken away that early pass at half court on the wings from the pass. On Dexter's three gives her 10 points for the game. Good D by Tarasi to intercept that pass from Johnson. And Tarasi, beautiful move on the other end. Timeout San Antonio. It's been a sighting, a fast break bucket by the Phoenix Mercury. I can use another. I've been on vacation since June. I, I wish we I could take another two months off. Well, sorry, I hate to tell you this, but training camp starts this week. So as you get ready and do your homework, what do you think is going to surprise people the most? What are you most excited about for this NBA season? Well, I'm looking at the uh, Shaquille O'Neal going to Cleveland, Ron Artest in L.A. Uh, the, uh, Orlando's done some really nice things. San Antonio's gotten better. It's going to be very competitive. But the Lakers are still the team to beat. And it's, it's, uh, it depends on, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to watching Ron Artest play with them. But like I said, Orlando made some improvements. Uh, San Antonio got better and Cleveland. So it's going to be fun. Yeah, we're certainly looking forward to it. We've seen you at a lot of WNBA games. You're certainly familiar with the game and the players. What player reminds you of you the most back in your playing days? Well, I hope none of these women will ever have an ass bigger than mine. <laughs> So I, I don't want to make that fair comparison. But you know what? The NBA, the WNBA has gotten a lot better. You know, when the WNBA first started, Houston won all the championships, but they didn't have enough good players. But with uh, Geno at uh, Connecticut, down at Baylor, the coast down there, Coast Summit at Tennessee, oh, at Oklahoma, this, this league has gotten really good. I wish the fans would give this league a second chance. But these teams have gotten a lot better. Well, I know they all appreciate you being here, and I know they all appreciate you not making the comparison, too. Thanks, Charles. Thank you for having me. You got that right, Heather. And uh, very colorful, as always, Charles Barkley. Someone say he's always on vacation, always has fun doing his job. The good news is that Heather's got much nicer hair than Charles, and he wasn't really relaxing. I saw him at the Hall of Fame when his buddy Michael got inducted, and uh, he actually presented Jerry Sloan, which was pretty cool. Vicki Johnson hits a three, and we are tied at 55. As San Antonio has scored the last six points, and Vicki Johnson leads the Silver Stars in scoring now with 16. Tamika Johnson, no relation, misses the three, and then Vicki Johnson called for a loose ball foul. That's her first. Got to be honest with you, if everybody else but Pondexter and Tarasi are taking shots for the Mercury you are playing into the hands of the half court defense of San Antonio they want Tamika Johnson to take that yeah. shot and that's why they're leaving her open she's three of six from the field but again every time it seems like Phoenix gets going and you expect that 10 nothing run as the Mercury often gets points in bunches, San Antonio hits a big shot, and tonight it's been Vicki Johnson. Well, Vicki Johnson's been amazing, but for San Antonio, they've hit eight of 12 threes. Usually that's reserved for the best three-point shooting team in the WNBA, the Mercury. Penny Taylor from three-point range. It's a great battle of wills. Throw out all the stats. It's game three. Players live for the moment of being able to perform in these type of situations. Waters missed the layup. Great look by Becky Hammond. Winner goes on to play L.A. in the conference finals. Bonner in transition from Tamika Johnson. This is what fuels the energy level of the Mercury. A rebound, a pass, a score. Five straight by Phoenix after San Antonio tied the game. Shot clock down to six. Young backing her way in, scores, and a foul on Bonner. Two on Bonner. First on Phoenix in the quarter. This is the way to go if you're a Mercury. You get a rebound, you look up, one or two dribbles, you pass ahead. When your bigs can run the floor like Oldie or Bonner or Tangela Smith, or Penny Taylor. They can outrun the other post. They have not done that throughout this game. Young, no. Ruth Riley kept it alive. Vicki Johnson open. 
spins out. Oh, Young just took it away from Oldie. Can't get that one to fall, but she'll go back to the line. Who's the more aggressive team? San Antonio. Who's got the energy? San Antonio. This is unheard of. They look, they don't look like a number four seed, which they really weren't. Everybody thought they'd either win the West or be in the top two or three in the West. They just had a bad start. Well, why doesn't Phoenix match them in terms of energy so far? What's going on there, you think? Sometimes when games are tight and people take away your strength, now you're playing in an area that you're not as comfortable. That's like crypt half court defense against them is like kryptonite. It takes away their magical powers. And they have struggled in the half court offensively. And a dangerous pass there. A lot of players going for the ball, but a foul called on San Antonio's Vicky Johnson. That's two on her and three on the Silver Stars in the quarter. I have seen the Mercury pound pound the dribble more in this game than I think I've seen them in half a season. They usually beat you off the pass. Hondexter missed the layup, poked out to Hammond. San Antonio's got to make its free throws as it, if it wants to win this game. Hammond knocks down a two. Ties the game at 60, but Sophia Young is just two of five from the foul line. And the Mercury is the best free throw shooting team, not just in WNBA history, but pro basketball history. As uh, the Boston Celtics had the NBA record, they were at 83 percent. Phoenix at 86 percent this year in the WNBA. San Antonio foul. Don't forget Wednesday on ESPN2, Game One in the Eastern Finals, Indiana, Detroit, followed by either San Antonio or Phoenix against LA, and then NBA TV Friday, Game Two of the Conference Finals. I will try not to forget that first game since I'm supposed to be there. <laughs> I will keep that in mind, but I'll be watching. There's Bonner. Terrific rookie out of Auburn, fifth, uh, fifth overall pick. That's what the Mercury have to do. You dribble, drive. You draw, and you kick to the shooter that has to locate that open gap. Make yourself available if you're a scorer. Hammond missed the layup. That's several missed layups by San Antonio here in the period. Tarasi exploding to the basket and foul. That's the third on Sophia Young, 15 foul. Well, Phoenix will shoot free throws the remainder of the quarter. This is like a freight train coming at you. She picks up speed. She knows how to use her body. She's big, she's strong, and she's a star of stars. And definitely a foul there you saw in the replay as uh, Young got Tarasi on the wrist. It's just tough because she comes at you, Dave, and you get back on your heels because she lowers the level of her height to get underneath you as a defender, and she's in control of the play. Young goes to the bench with three fouls. Tarasi, 89% free throw shooter. She led the league in scoring for the third time in four years. A lot of people feel the MVP of the 2009 regular season. I just believe that in Indiana, they have such great balance and great stars that they could still win if Douglas or Ketchings didn't play their A game. The Mercury cannot win if Diana Tarazzi's not in the mix. Becky Hammond with a three. She's got 18 points. She is the WNBA playoff career leader in three-pointers. And she's been tremendous shooting the basketball from out there tonight. Has four triples in the game. This defense is just fabulous. They work so hard at shoot around. What a steal by Hammond. A chance for San Antonio to take the lead back. Hammond now to Riley. Waters can't get it to go. Taylor with it. Phoenix has got to get back to passing the basketball instead of dribbling the basketball into a cluster of star Silver Stars players. Waters scores and the Phoenix foul. That break started by Becky Hammond throwing the baseball pass down court to Vicki Johnson. One of the best team defensive teams in this league. 
Once again, Penny Taylor going in, head down. You don't see Becky Hammond coming from behind. And then Brett Farr, I mean Becky Hammond, <laughs> throwing the strike down the, down the field. Hammond will go to the bench for perhaps the remainder of the quarter. We've got 16 lead changes in this game. We talked about San Antonio needing to hit free throws and water completes the three-point play. Two games in the playoffs and Mercury have been averaging close to 100 points, 98 points a game. The game is in the 60s. This is exactly where Dan Hughes wanted this game to be played. Half court and low score. That was a little advice shot there. She didn't catch the pass and she was in her shooting motion, Tangela Smith. San Antonio leading by two, opening the final minute rather of the third quarter. Johnson, couple of fancy dribbles and buries the J. She's got 18 points. Not going out quietly in her final WNBA season. Okay, traditionally, if a team hits two, four, or six points in a row, a team might call a timeout. This is not what Corey Gaines does. This is not the Paul Westhead system. They play through their mistakes. Foul is called as Smith will go to the line. Now, do you agree with that philosophy? I do with the Phoenix Mercury system. It's what he learned as a player playing for Coach Paul Westhead. It's what he knows as a coach. And this is the Phoenix Mercury way. And they have enough trust and belief in each other that they don't need to call a timeout, that they can get a stop or they can score. That worked two years ago. They won a championship and failed to make the playoffs last year. And this year, 23 and 11, the best record during the regular season. You'll hear from Coach Gaines with Heather Cox coming up in a few minutes. Dave, if you don't believe in your system, don't run it. He believes in his system. Phoenix has a foul to give San Antonio by two. Final 15 seconds of the third. Under 10. Waters long jumper. Not there. Riley is the bumped, and she'll go to the line. It's a big lineup on the court underneath. That's the twin towers between Waters and Ruth Riley. You're looking at 6-5 and 6-5. Third personal foul on Dewana Bonner. And Ruth Riley, who's had some memorable moments in the playoffs at the free throw line. She was the finals MVP in 2003 with Detroit. Won a couple titles there. Also won an NCAA championship and a gold medal. It's not a bad resume. Only one in the WNBA to win all three. And that's the end of the third quarter with San Antonio leading on the road by three. Can the Silver Stars Knock off the Mercury on their home floor and keep Vicki Johnson's career alive and another chance to go to the finals. In Phoenix, where the Mercury are down by three, joined by head coach Corey Gaines and coach 10 more minutes to keep your season alive. What adjustments, if any, do you make in this fourth quarter? Well, I think I think that since she's so hot right now, we know what I'm talking about, Becky, we may have to start switching that on the pick and roll. Because she's shooting before the, the people come up, the bigs come up. We may do an automatic switch on that. Offensively, certainly not where you've been in the regular season. What needs to happen to get your scoring on track? Stop, get defensive stops, and push out of it, get some breaks going. Corey, thank you. I know that sounds great in theory, but they're last in the league in defense of Phoenix Mercury. I believe that it's their offense, if they would stop turning the ball over, spread out the, the defense of San Antonio, and maybe hit a couple three-point shots and get their energy involved. But to me, it doesn't start on the defensive end for them. It starts with Becky Hammond for the Silver Stars. Hammond having a tremendous game tonight. 72-66, Silver Stars lead. That is 21 for Hammond. It'll be interesting to see if the Mercury can play coming from behind. They're not used to this. They're usually beating people by large margins. Here's Tangela Smith. Hits a three. She led the league in that category during the regular season as a center. The Merc led the league in scoring. 
They were leading the league in field goal percentage, second in threes. We've been looking for that team, but the defense has been amazing. Here's Becky Hammond, 21 points, finds Waters, and Riley with a jumper. And knock that one down. Oh, great work by Waters. She's had a very good night. Crossley, no. Smith rebounds. And need I say that San Antonio was last in the league in rebounding this year. They are more active and aggressive to the ball. Here's Tarasi. She has 20 to lead Phoenix, guarded by Hammond. Shot clock at 7. Tarasi over Riley. And we're tied again at 72. I don't think you switch that. I think you fight over the top of that if you're Becky Hammond. <laughs> Diana Tarazzi recognizing right here that there's a switch. So now she backs out Ruth Riley, creates a little space, and gets her shot in the flow. Her head, her body going towards the rim. The stars are stepping up tonight in game three. ESPN's presentation of the WNBA playoffs is presented by Adidas. Impossible is nothing. And in part by IHOP. IHOP's gone NFL. Try the all-pro lineup only at IHOP. Come hungry, leave happy. Two scorers in the WNBA here tonight. Diana Taurasi and Becky Hammond, and they've been the two best on the floor tonight as well. In big games, stars have to be stars, and role players have to be role players, and they are showing you why they are the elite. Phoenix led by six, or San Antonio led by six. Phoenix comes back with a couple of threes in a row, and then on the other end, out of the timeout, Waters is fouled. That's on Tangela Smith. That's only her first, and the first foul on either team here in the fourth quarter. It's kind of fun to see guys like LeBron and Kobe or Dwayne Wade and Kobe. Those guys go at it. And it's the same on the women's side. Yep. It's just mano a mano or from mano a mano. <laughs> well, the winner of this game will play Los Angeles Wednesday. If San Antonio wins game one would be in San Antonio. If Phoenix wins game one would be in Los Angeles. And a best of three. Here's Tarasi off the bounce. Another three, and she got hit as well. No foul was called, but Tarasi buried the triple. She's got 26. Diana Tarasi is doing exactly what Tamika Catchings did the other night in game three. She took over the game catch, and so is Tarasi. Waters missed the layup. Got to make that. Here's Kathy Pondexter. 10 points in the game. Into the lane, draws contact, and she'll go to the line. I can't say enough about the transition defense of San Antonio getting back, matching numbers. Not a bad play right here by Ann Waters, but this is a crafty offensive player in Cappy Pondexter. Second foul on Waters, first team foul on San Antonio. And Phoenix won a lot of games at the foul line this year. Best free throw shooting percentage in the regular season in the history of the WNBA, 86% as a team. Well, it's a career high this year, 88% from the foul line for Kathy Pondexter. They're 13 of 15 as a team tonight, and that's at 87%. They've been over 90% the first two games of the series. Here's Hammond with Tangela Smith on it. And Smith picks up her second foul, second on the Mercury. Cheer on your team in style. Log on to WNBAStore.com now for the largest selection of WNBA gear, including jerseys, T-shirts, and hats. Plus, receive free U.S. shipping and orders over $65. WNBAStore.com, one store, every team. Three minutes gone by in the fourth. Sophia Young out to Vicki Johnson. VJ with a three. She's got 21. She averaged six points a game during the regular year. That's Mercury basketball, though, getting up in transition after a made basket. They don't care if you score. You've got to get back to stop them from scoring, and BJ saves the best 
for the biggest moments. She's been in a lot of game threes in her career. And then Tamika Johnson picked up a foul underneath the basket. Second in the third team foul on Phoenix. Co Willingham to the bench and rookie Dewana Bonner back in the game 2009 WNBA playoffs presented by Adidas game three here in Phoenix with Nancy Lieberman I'm Dave Pash Heather Cox here as well winner advances to the West Finals to play Los Angeles switch everything if you cannot get over the screen this what exactly what Pondexter just did shot clock was running out Hammond had to fire that up Here's Tarasi. And a foul away from the ball. Called on Lawson Wade. That's two on her, two on the Silver Stars here in the period. So often, the Phoenix Mercury make you scramble to recover defensively. Push it up. That hasn't been a problem in this game for the Silver Stars. Phoenix perfect in the quarter. 4-4 four four from the field. And they go inside here to Smith. Turn around over Waters. Thirteen points for Smith, who didn't do much on offense in the first two games of the series. Almost got a steal there. Tarasi did it. That one won't drop. And then Smith got it back and was fouled. The Mercury have now gotten their crowd back into this game with energy, fast break, and offensive rebounding. And Waters shaken up. Sophia Young picked up her fourth foul on the play. Look at this right here. You switch to deny. That time Waters goes up. Tarasi deflects the ball. This is where Bonner should have had her head up. She had Tangela Smith down the floor. But you know what? They got a possession. Now with Waters on the bench, San Antonio was getting a lot of work done on the low block with Ru Ru Ruth Riley on the floor at the same time as Waters. Now with Waters out, how does that change things for San Antonio and what it could do in the paint? This is a, a pretty small team except for Ruth Riley, and Ruth doesn't run as well as Ann Waters, so you'd like to see what it does on the rebounding side. Now, how's that not traveling? After uh, Delana Bonner got the rebound, Tarasi into the line, hanging and finishing! for Tarasi. San Antonio turns it over. Nobody can take a hit like Tarasi and still square her hips and shoulders to the rim for her shot. Look at this. She's so big and strong. You get the bump. She turns. Her eyes are on the rim. She just has the total skill set from her position. Here's Pondexter for three. Smith with the rebound. Two chances, and the second one goes. It's a 10-point lead. In the last three minutes, we've seen a 16-point swing. And by the way, the fact that the Mercury don't call timeouts, they, th they play through their errors. In the fourth quarter, they make you tired. Vicki Johnson again playing what could be her final game, having one of her best ever playoff games. She's got 24 points on 9 of 11 shooting. 30 points for Diana Taurasi. This is big time. It's big time players on a big time stage delivering the way we said they would. Tarazi knows this is her time. It's her moment. She knows that she cannot be guarded. The little foot fake and the shot over the smaller defender. Largest lead for Phoenix was 10. Keep the pace high. A one drag. Another drag. Two through. Get the pick. Exactly what Corey Gaines just said. 
Don't foul. Keep the, the pace of this game fast. Don't let them rest. Vicki Johnson with 24 to lead San Antonio. Tarasi has 30 for Phoenix. And the Mercury leading by nine. San Antonio cannot keep up. And Dave, one thing to keep in mind, San Antonio has no full timeout. They only have 120. If this thing gets close, if it gets much closer than this. Sophia Young struggling in the second half. Here's Phoenix again in transition. Pondexter to the basket. Bonner can't tip it in, but she'll go to the line. Let's get an injury update from Heather Cox. Well, guys, you saw San Antonio's Ann Waters leave the court with a tweaked right ankle. She took her shoe off, tightened that ankle brace, is available to come back in. Remember, she does have 10 points tonight, 4 of 11 shooting as she gets ready to check back in for Ruth Riley, who just hasn't had the impact tonight that Ann Waters has. So Waters back in. Sophia Young, Heather, will stay on the floor after she just picked up her fifth personal. Well, Phoenix is having the impact right now in the fourth quarter on San Antonio. They wear you down with their relentless style. Now, they might not get you, Dave, in the first quarter or the second quarter, but you can see they're a totally different basketball team the last four or five minutes running the ball. Waters got position underneath. They ran a little four around one. They let Ann Waters isolate underneath. Still, in the last six minutes, Phoenix has scored 24 points as a nine-point lead with under four to go. Tangela Smith way off there. Ham and the rebound. Still enough time for San Antonio, especially with a player like Becky Hammond on the floor. And Hammond will take it all the way and she'll go to the line. I was just going to say, during that run by the Phoenix Mercury, the player from San Antonio that did not score was Becky Hammond. They started switching everything on the perimeter, changing up the defense, keeping her a little bit off balance. That was on Pondexter, her third. Both teams with four team fouls. Becky Hammond, one of the best free throw shooters in the game at 90%. Got them both. <laughs> Becky Hammond trying to win the game by scoring. No assist for Hammond. That's a rarity. He was in the top three in the league in that category, but 23 points tonight on 8 of 14 from the field. Tarasi, no. But got her own miss. You start working this clock down. Both teams have one foul to give. So if it's going to lead to a score, you might want to make take that foul early. Clock inside of 10. Here is Cappy Pondexter. It's a three. Bonner. Can't. It did get it to spin. Hung on the rim. Looked like it might come out, and it went down. Cappy Pondexter was wondering before the draft how good was the one of Bonner. I think she's finding out. How good is Becky Hammond? 25 points tonight for the 11 year pro. Keeping San Antonio in it, down seven, two and a half to go. But they need Phoenix to miss. And the Mercury have been on fire. Lone layup there, though, by Tangela Smith. San Antonio looking to push the tempo here with Vicki Johnson up the floor. Penny Taylor has to stay in the grill of Becky Hammond, no matter where. She did. Left her free, but she couldn't hit the triple there. There's Pondexter off the Tarasi screen. I'd give the ball to either Pondexter or Tarasi and make them stop them. Got off the mark by Pondexter. And Sophia Young, out racing the defense, cuts the lead to five. First points of the quarter for Sophia Young. She has 15 for the game. 
Still a ball game with a minute and a half to go. Phoenix clinging to a five-point lead on San Antonio. Winner to the conference finals. Becky Hammond and Vicki Johnson have been in a lot of battles together, and Hammond is hoping this is not their final game as teammates. What really hurt my heart last year was uh, not knowing if VJ was coming back or not, um, and just really hurting for her uh, to not get a championship. Um, so that was something that kind of always stayed with me and has always been in the back of my mind um, th pretty much this entire season. They've combined for 49 points tonight. No one has played more games as a duo in WNBA history than Hammond and Johnson. All their days together in New York. And now in San Antonio. Went to the finals last year. And right now trailing Phoenix with 92 seconds remaining in this decisive game three in the conference semis. Dave, I don't know if they can complete each other's sentences, but they certainly can complete what each other does on the basketball court and they've done that through time and they're very special teammates and friends to one another. I was checking with Heather. She was listening in during the timeout. Well, the dynamic on the bench during that timeout was so unique. There was an empty chair between Becky and Vicky. Not one word was said between the two of them. They didn't even make eye contact, understanding the magnitude. And right at the end, they clasped, they clasped, clasped hands, easy for me to say, and spoke, that's all they needed to do for each other. Oh, great hustle by Oldie after a blown layup. Phoenix gets another opportunity. That's been happening a lot here in the last few minutes. I'm a little myth that Tarasi in the last three possessions has not had the ball in her hand or taken a shot. Shot clock at six. Penny Taylor got to the hoop and put it in. Under a minute to go, the lead to seven for the Mercury. Darling to the basket. And a hard foul by Taylor. And Darling will go to the free throw line. Only a 67% shooter, though, during the regular year. On that drive, you would probably prefer that she make Helen Darling attempt the shot instead of stopping the clock and giving San Antonio a chance to set their defense. And to get points with that clock stop, you see the uh, timeout situation, only that 120 that you talked about for San Antonio. That's almost a little bit of a misnomer because Corey Gaines doesn't use his timeouts. Darling. He might as well lend some over to Dan Hughes. Sophia Young saved it, but stepped on the baseline. Phoenix ball, a six-point lead. San Antonio start fouling here or too early? They need to stop the clock. They need to extend the game because they need San Antonio the ball and they need time. Who do you foul? Everybody shoots better than 80% on this team except Nicole Oldie. She's the one I guess you would foul as Waters picks up her third personal, but they got Bonner who's an 81% free throw shooter. Well, you put the rookie at the line. Let's see what she does in this situation. But more importantly, you have to play the foul game. You have to play the percentages. Bonner perfect tonight at the line. Three of three, 11 points in the game. By the way, San Antonio, we've mentioned all game long, has played fantastic defense. They've done it the way Dan Hughes executed in practice, and they've given up 95 points. And they get another chance. They have dominated the offensive glass and out-hustled San Antonio here in the last few minutes and look like they're going to advance to the conference finals. The bugaboo for San Antonio this year has been rebounding. Exactly what the problem was all season long. Penny Taylor gets in there, fights for the rebound, another possession for the Mercury. Hammond picked up the foul. Pondexter will go to the line. She's an 88% free throw shooter. <laughs> Phoenix has not turned the ball over this quarter. They have shot lights out. They have out-hustled San Antonio here in the last few minutes. If you ask coaches what wins basketball games down the stretch, 
probably to a T does say foul shooting, making your foul shots at the end of a game puts it away for your team. They're at 83 percent in this game from the line. Vicky Johnson. No, Young got the rebound. Hammond, an open three that has to go down, and it does. Two possession game. San Antonio has to foul, and Waters commits her fourth. Pondexter will go back to the line. Sensational shot, open shot by Becky Hammond. Good quick foul by the Silver Stars. It's what you're going to see this for the next 19.4 seconds. Pondexter 4-4 four, four at the line. 16 points tonight. And how about the Mercury crowd? Over time, they've been known as the X Factor. Very difficult for teams to come into this building and to win in this building. You jinxed her, by the way. Always happens. Pondexter will have one more. Even if she makes just one, it, it gets it to a three-possession game. So but Phoenix, if she can knock down this one, it'll go to seven. It'll be seven, but Phoenix has to switch everything on the perimeter. You don't want to foul a three-point shooter, but you want to be in their, in their zip code. Knocked out of bounds. That takes a precious second off the clock. Three-possession game with 18.5 left. want to foul the, the mercury have to just get back and put a hand up to the shooter and they foul oldie commits the foul on hammond who's automatic so 12.6 left hammond can get it down to a two possession game exactly what the coaches said don't do do not stop the clock do not give a 91 percent foul shooter a chance to, to cut into our lead because again it allows san antonio to set their defense and foul immediately Hammond really stepping up tonight, but misses a free throw. Glad you didn't call my games when I played. <laughs> <laughs> Hammond one of two, two possession game. I mean, you're wasting precious minutes if you're not fouling. And they were not. No one was covering Penny Taylor. Everybody else ran down floor. For seconds. And so now it's 7.9. Well, almost five seconds off the clock there. Pretty tough right now for Dan Hughes to have any chance. So that foul, Dave, has to come on the inbounds pass. You foul somebody immediately. <laughs> really all Penny Taylor has to do here is just make one get it to three possessions again. Well, the WNBA playoffs have been absolutely spectacular. The star power. Lisa Leslie's retirement. She doesn't want to go away. Candace Parker showing she's rounding herself into MVP form again after she had her baby. Tamika Catchings is just playing on another planet with her energy and relentlessness for the fever. And this. Timeout. 100 to 92, Phoenix eight seconds away from getting back to the conference finals. Missed the playoffs last year after winning a championship two years ago. Based on all the teams you've watched, if Phoenix hangs on here, who is the best remaining team in the 2009 playoffs? The, uh, uh, Dave, I have to tell you, all four of them wouldn't be here if they weren't playing great basketball. The danger team for me in this whole mix is Detroit. The way Tweedy Nolan is playing without Katie Smith and the help that they've been getting, it, uh, Kara Braxton has lifted her game to another level. They're the defending champions. They will not go quietly. I, I, I wouldn't want to play them. And remember, Lisa Leslie is playing her final WNBA season, so you know LA is not going to go quietly. And Candace Parker back after giving birth in May. That'll be a great series between L.A. and Phoenix. Hammond missing, Taylor rebounds. Phoenix is moving on to the conference finals. <laughs> 30 points for Diana Taurasi. She was outstanding in the second half. Becky Hammond had 29 in the loss. A great WNBA playoff game. Tarasi at 18 after intermission as Vicki Johnson for the last time 
leaves a WNBA floor. And boy, she went out firing 24 points on 9 of 12 shooting. And you know it's hard for uh, Becky Hammond to not be able to play with her favorite teammate again. This is it for that duo. This is not it for Diana Taurasi. She's standing by with Heather Cox. Dave, thanks so much. Diana, how did this team take its offense to a whole new level in the fourth quarter? Um, we had to. Uh, and I think it started the other end. Getting a couple stops, pushing the tempo, and, you know, we got some good looks, knocked them down, and that was kind of the ball game. And you, 30 points. Was there a point in this game where you decided, I need to take over, put this team on my back? Not really. You know, I just play the game, and sometimes it comes, sometimes it doesn't, but if you're playing as a unit, things get done, and today we got it done. By getting it done, you now advance, get to play Los Angeles. You were 3-1 and one against them in the regular season. How much confidence does that give you as you head to the Western Conference Finals? None. Uh, you look at that team, and they pretty much look unbeatable sometimes with their roster, so you know, it's going to be very, very difficult for us. That's the reason we play the game, Sandy. Thanks, Diana. Back to you guys. Well, it should be a great series between the Mercury and the Sparks. They've got a nice rivalry going. It's a great rivalry. You have the big players on the inside. You have Thompson, Leslie, Parker. But I really think that the zone of Phoenix can hurt the uh, the Sparks because during the course of the season, teams that ran zone against them gave them a lot of trouble. But the Sparks are the Sparks, and they're a very talented group of players. Four excellent teams left. This is a terrific WNBA playoff game won by the Mercury missed the playoffs last year won the championship two years ago and they're trying to get back there they're one step away they've got LA in the conference finals starting Wednesday Detroit and Indiana in the Eastern Conference Finals beginning Wednesday night this has been a presentation of ESPN the worldwide leader in sports for Nancy Lieberman Heather Cox and our entire ESPN crew I'm Dave Pash good night from Phoenix